What if I told you a tale of monsters, people from outer space? Monsters who invaded our planet, who terrorized our people. Monsters who came to steal the soil of our planet, who came to take the water from our oceans, who came to take everything from us for their people, killing us in the process. What if I told you a tale of monsters, monsters who came from outer space, who came to colonize our planet with their people, with their monstrous people, monsters who came to kill us in the billions to make room for their people? Imagine that. The Europeans who invaded us did all of the same things that monsters from outer space did. Europeans did things even worse. This is the story of what has happened to us. We are Nikan Flaka, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. We are the 5% of our people who remain from the north to the south. This is still our land. Our rivers are still ours. Our mountains, our deserts, our valleys, our farmlands, they are still ours. They belong to no one else. The Mississippi, it's ours. The Amazon, it's ours. The Ohio, the Colorado, the Andes, the Appalachians, the Sierra Madre, they are all still ours. All of the beauty and the wealth of our continent is still ours and no one else's. We need to speak up. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We will always be here. We have nowhere else to go. Desde Alaska, tierra de fuego, somos solamente una raza, gente de agua. Y te voy a decir, no somos latinos, y no somos hispanos, somos solamente ni cantaca, la gente de nightmare of my people, enslaved, robbed, mutilated, and buried alive. When I was young, I did not notice Canada's plains, the Mississippi River, the volcanoes of Mexico and Central America, that they were covered in blood, the blood of my people at the hands of Europeans. And at Cajamarca, in Peru, on the Argentine plains, the Caribbean, along the Amazon, in the mountains, the valleys, the blood of my people, in a holocaust, in a savage genocide, at the hands of Europeans. I did not notice the silence and slavery of my people, I was silent, I was a slave, I was ignorant. No one was there to tell me of the massacres, the smallpox holocaust, the one that killed 95% of our population at the hands of Europeans. I did not know that our poverty was a direct result of being robbed of the vast mineral and land wealth, forests, farmland, gold, iron ore, the wealth of this our continent, centuries ago, by the thieving and killing hands 
of Europeans. I did not notice, I did not know, I should have known, but how could I have known since this was kept from me? This was kept from my people. When I was young, my identity lay in shame, in poverty, in hopelessness, in ignorance. My shame in not being white. My poverty in not being white. My hopelessness in not being white. My ignorance told me I needed to be white. No other option was presented to me or made known to me or even wanted. I was a child of ignorance. I was a child of slavery. Slavery to the needs and wants of Europeans. The Europeans in Canada, those in the United States, the Europeans who control in Mexico and in Central America and in South America. I was a slave of ignorance, born not knowing of the monstrous European crimes. I did not notice, I did not know that I and those who are my people, the so-called Indians, that we were, that we are, the less than 5% who survived. We survived the massive killings, massacres, savage attacks by Europeans, the biggest holocaust in the history of humanity. I did not know. I never saw the movie that told of this. The school books never mentioned this. My family, my friends, my people never spoke of this. The world did not speak to me of this. Of all of this, I was ignorant. There was no guidance for me from our leaders. We had no leaders, no venerables or warriors to give me or my people dignity to teach us honor. There was no knowledge of our heroes and our accomplishments that could have been told to us by teaching us our Nikan Flaka history, the history of our people as indigenous people. There was only racism since I was a child. Racism on all our continent, Canada to Central America and down to South America. The racism is everywhere, like a curse on our people. at today's marches don't just want a green card they want the whole country and here's how I got there wherever you stand on the issue of illegal immigration what I'm about to say may change the way you think about it and rock you to the core one of the groups involved in today's rallies is a group called the Mexica movement what is it what is the Mexica movement want Amnesty and, innocent, uh, and instant citizenship? No, not quite. Here's what their official platform says. We totally reject all illegal European colonial squatter occupation borders on our continent. We also reject colonialism's right to keep stealing the wealth of our lands. And we reject their artificial divisions of our people. So, just to sum up for those of you who don't speak Mexica. This is a group that thinks America is their property and anyone who doesn't fit their description should leave the country. What it also means is this is a hateful, racist group and it should be denounced immediately. But of course we all know that's not going to happen. No, probably what will happen is the people who might have been sympathetic to the plight of illegal immigrants that are watching this program right now, maybe they will see the footage of the people of this group holding posters like this one. That's nice, isn't it? They'll take a look at it and think, wait a minute. I mean, adopting a radical racist agenda, which involves kicking everybody, you know, out of the uh, country, is, uh, is really not something I want to be involved in. 
yet again. Here's what I know tonight. Today's rallies will do nothing but hurt people that they're trying to help. No matter how many American flags they now may be carrying, these rallies give voice to radical groups who claim that America is theirs alone. The people who want to come here legally through the front door and melt into our great melting pot of a society are being drowned out by the voices of hate. Those coming to Disneyland today got an unexpected greeting. Something better to do than kill people. Approximately 30 activists from different organizations united their causes, mainly to get the attention of Disneyland, the city's main moneymaker. Push back against Disneyland. To get this in order. You're the power here. Arrest these police officers. Fire this police chief who's incompetent. He's referring to the latest police shootings in Anaheim. This is my brother, Martin Angel Hernandez. He was shot and killed on March 6, 2012. But it's about the American Latino Museum and why it's a racist, uh, genocidal thing that he's participating in. Are taking both? Or, huh? Or am I taking both of these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I was going to. This is the one is the introduction, and the other one is. Kind of because we're, because, oh, because we're, That's a record. We're, we're here, we, we're documenting all of this because we haven't been able to meet with him. He's a key person in the American Latino Museum. Yes, no. And it's his bill. It's his bill. Oh, sure. We're going to do a protest outside uh, because we're not really in the. I'm not getting him to address the racist components of this. Well, if yeah, you can email me to address all of them. American Latino Museum is genocidal. American Latino Museum is racist. American Latino Museum is genocidal. American Latino Museum is racist. American Latino Museum is genocidal. Oh my god. Mentally, politically, the judge came up and he said, Well, that's happening in Canada. Why does it matter to you? 
But what, an attack on one is an attack on all. So they are attacking our people in Canada, that means they're attacking our people in East LA. They're attacking our people in Chile, that means they're attacking the people in East LA. So anything that happens on our continent, we have to stand up and defend our people. We have to be conscious of everything that's happening to the whole continent here. There are a lot of very ugly things going, but here we are in the heart of East LA, and our people are still asleep. They're still in ignorance. East Los Angeles! I don't know more! I don't know more. The Maya. I don't know more. The I don't know more. Dunba. I don't know more. Inca. No, I don't know more. Mexica. I don't know more. All indigenous people. I don't know more. When I was young, I loved to scream. So I didn't care that the enemy had taken over my lands. I didn't care that he stole from us. I didn't care for those who died. Showing the 
the continent with a bunch of skulls and uh, showing the, the crimes of the Europeans, uh, white supremacy, genocide, racial rape, biological warfare, slavery, cultural castration, uh, ongoing colonialism, and other war crimes. Uh, we use the term cultural castration because we are not able to reproduce ourselves authentically as a people, because culturally we have been castrated. We don't have warriors to defend us. We don't have the warriors to discipline our own people. That's why you have all these gangsters out there killing our people. There's nobody to uh, properly educate them, give them a sense of honor, give them a sense of past and future, give them a sense of collective uh, need to unite uh, against the colonialism which, in which we live in. And then uh, the, the, the concept of slavery, one, I'm a slave right now to this language that I'm using. It's not my my language. This is the, the language of a little island off the coast of Europe. Yet, most of you, this is your primary language. Or you'd be speaking Spanish. Neither of these languages are ours, but we think of them as ours. Or we think of them as more civilized languages. So, there's also the issue of slavery. Okay? Uh, we have no control over our lands. We're poor. We basically serve doing the slave labor. But people will say, oh, but we don't have chains and whatever, you know, like real slaves. Well, actual slaves in the South did not have chains. They had their little huts where they lived, and they went into the fields and worked as slaves. They didn't have chains. They were the slaves of Jackson, and they were the slaves of uh, Washington, who was a slave owner. That's where you have a lot. A lot of uh, African descent people with these names, because these are the, sl the slave masters' names, and they, they were given to them. But it's a similar situation with our people. That's why you have so many Garcias and Martinezes, because they were, they were the names uh, of the masters on the haciendas and the mines and all of that. That's how we got that. In the same way that you have the African descent uh, people, the majority of them actually have some European blood in them. You'll see different degrees of it. So there are no no vast majority and they're pure African. You see that you can phys physically see that they're mixed. And yet nobody calls them Euro Afros. Malcolm X had a, a grandfather who was European and nobody calls him uh, Malcolm X the mulatto. You know, so you gotta kind of question a lot of things that you're told, this is a fact, and that's it. Well, Europeans are defining things in their interest. This is our land now. You lost it a long time ago, and you have no more rights to it. And we say, yes, you're, you're right. Well, that, that's us being the good slaves. we got to become thinkers. We're not thinkers. Uh, as far as the world is concerned, thinkers is nothing of what we are. We're gangsters, we're drug dealers, we're uh, laborers in the fields, we're anything other than thinkers. And that's something that we have to really question, especially if you know that history of civilizations and cities and universities and mandatory education and all of the science and how ancient our civilizations are. It's, this should be something that we should be proud of and, and we should be getting our, our ourselves and our families to become part of that heritage so we, we look at ourselves as a long line of people who were civilized and had all these cities that were creating art, that were inventing and all of that. This whole gangster and this whole drug dealers and all of these negative things where the majority of our population are now basically, uh, again, janitors and and working in, in the fields and all that, um, not because you know, we're not capable of anything than that, that's where we are kept. And that's something that has to be questioned. So that's a little bit of kind of what we have as far as some of these uh, posters, another one about cultural castration. Um, on this one, you see the before and after where they would cut our hair and uh, give us European names and give us a, a Christian religion 
and uh, it was uh, something that was documented in these photos, but it didn't start in the 1800s. It started in the, in the 1500s in Mexico, where they also culturally castrated us, and one of the first things they did was to cut our hair. Okay, it was a, a form of the, uh, taking away the masculinity from the males and forcing a, a Christian first name and, and forcing their Spanish master's name on them. Uh, and again, forcing a Christian religion on them and forcing them to feel inferior to the supreme white race. But that is basically what was going on in the 1800s with the tribal people. Again, more cultural castration. And again, the rape of our people over the centuries. In the same way that the African descent people over the centuries, they were raped. And that's why you end up with lighter people, different shades of African descent people. In the majority, they are mixed. But nobody calls the African descent people Britannic because they speak English and they have British names, right? But the same should hold for us. Uh, why should we be called Hispanic or Latino because of the fact that just we speak Spanish and because we've been raped over the last 500 years? Or if you look at the Lakota around here, most of them have English names. They speak English. Why aren't they called Britannic? So it's a matter of us using logic. So we move on to, uh, uh, again, uh, another codex which we have over here, and this is from the Borgia. Uh, and the Borgia Codex uh, is pretty amazing. It's also, I think it's about $30. Do yourself a favor and take a look through the Borgia Codex to see some of the most beautiful art in, in the world. And it's something, it's not really intentionally hidden from us, it's just something that we've never been taught about this art, but again, even if you look at it, you probably might not be able to make heads or tails of this this uh, codex. Oh, it's, in, it's called Borgia because of the family Borgia that had it. It's one of the few books that did not get burnt. The, the Spaniards bragged about burning our libraries of tens of thousands of our books in the Mayan areas and in the Mexica areas and other areas. So. Uh, if those books had survived, we would know a little bit more. Actually, we would know a lot more about our own history. So that, that's the, the essence of what we want to present here in Standing Rock. And it's just kind of like a little, a little bit of a lot of different things that get you started. And we've been out here. I'm going to move over here to this table over here because uh, there are two uh, important uh, posters up here. One is this uh, Thanksgiving poster, which we were here, uh, what's called Thanksgiving week, and it says genocide, terrorism, smallpox, colonialism, torture, theft of lands, rapes, Thanksgiving. Which crime are you thankful for? Because that's what Thanksgiving is. It's a celebration of genocide. Thank you, Jesus, for all the free land and killing all these Indians, helping us with biological warfare. But most of the people don't think of it that way, but that's the essence of how they got all the free land and all the free oil, like the, the oil that they're pulling out of North Dakota here. Nobody's even questioning it. How does this corporation get the right to all that oil? And now it's billions of uh, dollars of oil, and yet, the, the, the local people, you got people in Pine Ridge who can't even pay for the fuel to keep them warm during the winter. There, there, there's a, a lot of problems, uh, not just in Pine Ridge, but our people, whether it's in the cities or in the rural areas, uh, out of poverty. And yet, the Europeans continue to cut our forests, uh, poison our rivers, poison our land, poison our air, and we say, well, it's their stuff, you know, we, what can we do about it? There are a lot of things we can do. There are a lot of things we can do. First of all, we got to have the, the understanding that without knowledge of ourselves, nothing is going to change. 
we have to know how ancient our civilizations are, uh, what are the accomplishments of our people, and what's been this 500 year history of Holocaust, serial Holocaust, and genocide. And as the, the video explains about genocide, it's a complex thing, it's just not killing people. You deprive them of their livelihood, of their sense of honor, the sense of history, and you destroy them in every way possible, that is also genocide. So look up genocide. Uh, uh, Raphael Lemkin is a Jewish survivor of the Holocaust, and he's the guy who developed this concept of genocide. So the more educated you are, the more you're going to know about yourself, the more pride you're going to have, and a real sense of honor. Because our people don't have a real sense of honor. Marine honor and pride has nothing to do with our people. There are gang pride, gang honor. That is a way of celebrating the killings of our people. So, again, this is our presentation from Standing Rock. And uh, again, a thank you for all of you who helped us come out here to Standing Rock. Uh, you'll see a lot of the other videos uh, that are out there. Uh, the beautiful day of snowing uh, over there at Standing Rock. Uh, we went to visit the areas where there, there was a major crime being committed by, by the law enforcement agencies around here that were committing crimes against the people who were there to protect the water. But they're there to protect the land. They're there to complain about the broken treaties. Every treaty that, that the Europeans have made with our people has been broken. When you, when you break a contract, you automatically get back whatever, whatever was involved in that treaty. And in the treaties here, the, the, the Europeans get to say, oh, well, that doesn't matter anymore. It's kind of like the, the burglar that, that goes and steals a whole bunch of stuff and then he says, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm going to make a judgment on whether everything that I stole was okay for me to steal or not. Well, I decide that, you know, all the jewelry and the money that I got, all of that is mine now, even though it was yours yesterday. The criminals should not be allowed any say in theft, nor whether uh, if you have them on video and you see that they've killed somebody, as we've been seeing with all these police killings, and still they get away. Uh, again, I feared for my life as this guy ran away and I shot him in the back. Yet people are, aren't shocked by that. Uh, the majority of people aren't shocked with that. And of course now we have Trump, a white supremacist, coming into power. Most, most likely he's going to declare a dictatorship. He's going to bring in white supremacy as a, the, the norm. And yet 25% of our people voted for him which is pretty outrageous. So if you don't do something about waking yourself up, if you don't do something about organizing uh, a way at least to teach our people this history, and not to get into this whole thing about my spirituality, I'm gonna do some rituals and ceremonies, I'm gonna go out and dance and get in a costume, that changes nothing. We've been doing that for 500 years. Educate yourself, get out uh, and organize people, share the knowledge, get out to, to the protests that take place, uh, or nothing's going to change. You're going to be part of the problem because you refuse to take simple actions that will educate you so you can speak a little bit more intelligently about who you are. And this is a historic point right now where at Standing Rock, our people are taking a stand from all across the continent. And you have European allies uh, who are coming here and who are working to support. Granted, they have, they have white privilege and they have the, the means with which to come here. They can take the time off. They have the money to be able to come here in nice RVs and all that. But the rest of us, you know what, come down here even if you can for one day. You will be part of history. You will be giving moral support. So this Mexica movement, again, thanking the members and supporters who donated 
so that we can be here. And we want to thank the others who, are, who have not been supporters before and have just been finding out about Mexica movement. We thank you too. So again, uh, goodbye from Standing Rock and we'll see you back in California uh, in a couple of days. Thank you.